Hello and welcome to Anomalous History. In this video, we will discover what would happen if King Charles III stepped down and handed the throne to Prince William. If King Charles III decided to step down and pass the throne to his son, Prince William, it would be a significant moment in British history. The UK has been mourning the loss of Queen Elizabeth II, who reigned for an incredible 70 years. However, the country would also be welcoming a king who has spent just as long preparing to replace her. From the outside, the reign of King Charles III appears to have gotten off to a shockingly good start. In his first speech as king, he made it clear that he intended to follow in his mother's footsteps. He pledged to uphold the constitutional principles that are at the heart of the nation with the same unswerving devotion that the queen herself had. Charles is now aged 73, making him the oldest person to become king in British history. In the years leading up to Queen Elizabeth II's death, speculation mounted that she may have been contemplating stepping down and handing the throne to her son. However, Charles' popularity among the public was nearly decimated, especially following his divorce from Princess Diana in 1996. As recent as 2021, there was a desire among the British public for Prince William to succeed Queen Elizabeth II instead of his father. This sentiment reflects the changing attitudes towards the monarchy, with many people now looking towards a more modern, relatable figure to lead the country. If Charles were to step down and hand the throne to Prince William, it would be a momentous occasion for the monarchy. It would signal a new era, with a fresh and youthful king taking the helm. However, it would also bring uncertainty, with questions surrounding the future direction of the monarchy and how it will continue to adapt to the changing needs and expectations of the British people. There are two scenarios in which Charles could still be alive but no longer king, according to royal historian Marlene Koenig. The first scenario is under the Regency Act, which could be triggered if Charles became physically incapacitated, meaning he could no longer carry out his duties. The monarch's inability to carry out their duties would also have to be certified by various people including their spouse, according to Dr. Bob Morris, an honorary senior associate researcher at UCL's Constitution Unit. If this occurred, Prince William would become regent, Morris said. However, there is another, more controversial scenario, abdication. Koenig believes this is highly unlikely to happen, given Charles' intention to follow in his mother's footsteps. Abdication would involve Charles making the decision to step down by himself. To make it official, he would first need the UK Parliament to pass an act of abdication, according to Koenig. He can't just say, OK, here it's yours, William. The succession to the throne is legislated by Parliament, she added. Morris, on the other hand, believes that if Charles truly wanted to step back, he could. The brute fact is if he wanted to go, no one could stop him, Morris said. However, Morris emphasized the importance of the law providing for the lawful succession of William. The monarchy is an institution that holds a significant place in the UK's history, culture, and politics. It has a complex set of rules and traditions that must be followed in the event of a monarch's abdication or death. The potential consequences of Charles stepping down and passing the throne to William are numerous. William would become the next king of the United Kingdom, and he would face significant challenges in continuing the monarchy's legacy. He would have to navigate the public's expectations, maintain the institution's relevance, and continue to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of the nation. The British monarchy has a long and rich history, and its future will undoubtedly continue to be shaped by the decisions of its leaders. In addition, if King Charles III were to step down, Every other royal in the official line of succession would move up a spot, resulting in some inheriting more duties, titles, and responsibilities. This shift in the line of succession would put pressure on those who move up the line, as they would have to adjust to their new roles and responsibilities. According to royal historian Marlene Koenig, if Charles were to abdicate, Prince William would become king, and his son, Prince George, would inherit the Duchy of Cornwall. The Duchy of Cornwall is a vast portfolio of private-owned land and assets, estimated to be worth as much as $1 billion as of March 2023. Koenig notes that if Charles were to abdicate, Prince George would become the minor Duke of Cornwall, similar to Prince Charles in the early years of his mother's reign. However, Koenig also points out that the sudden shift in the line of succession would put pressure on both William and George. 
While William would be granted the top job in the monarchy, he would have had much less time than his father to prepare for the role. Koenig notes that William has only recently started attending Duchy of Cornwall meetings to learn how to run the duchy, a crucial aspect of the monarch's duties. According to royal experts, the act of abdication is still considered taboo in the United Kingdom. While other European royal families, such as those in Spain and the Netherlands, have seen abdications in recent years, the tradition of British monarchs serving until death or forced removal has remained firmly intact. As royal historian Marlene Koenig points out, the last time a king voluntarily stepped down from the throne in the UK was in 1936 when King Edward VIII abdicated to marry American socialite Wallace Simpson. Koenig notes that even today, Edward's abdication is still regarded as a dereliction of duty and a constitutional crisis for the royal family. But why is abdication such a contentious issue in the UK? According to fellow royal historian Hugo Vickers, the answer lies in the religious vows that monarchs in some countries take. In places where abdication is related to a particular religion, Monarchs feel obligated to stick to their religious vows and remain on the throne until their death. Koenig, on the other hand, argues that abdication fundamentally goes against British values and traditions. She contends that the notion of voluntarily relinquishing power is simply not in the British nature. Interestingly, no British monarch had ever abdicated voluntarily before King Edward VIII. Even during periods of political upheaval, such as the English Civil War in the 17th century, the royal family managed to maintain its hold on the throne. As Koenig explains, Edward's abdication represented a unique and unprecedented event in British history. When Edward announced his intention to marry Simpson, who was a divorced American, the move sparked an uproar among the public and the royal family. Many saw Simpson as an unsuitable match for a future queen, and some suspected that she had ties to Nazi Germany. Despite the controversy surrounding Edward's abdication, the act was ultimately accepted by Parliament and paved the way for his brother George VI to take the throne. Koenig notes that at the time, the UK was facing numerous political and social challenges, including the rise of fascism in Europe and the threat of war. In this context, abdication was seen as a necessary step to safeguard the monarchy's survival and ensure that George VI, and later Queen Elizabeth II, would be able to rule with stability and continuity. Looking ahead to the reign of Prince Charles, many experts agree that abdication is unlikely unless there is a major scandal or crisis. Koenig suggests that for Charles to voluntarily relinquish the throne, something would have to happen on the scale of the Edward and Simpson affair. Otherwise, she argues, Charles is likely to follow in the footsteps of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, and remain on the throne until his death. Ultimately, the question of abdication raises broader issues about the role of the monarchy in modern society, and whether the institution can adapt to changing social and political norms. We are super excited about you watching our video and look forward to your continued support it means the world to us. See you in the next video.